millions of votes already cast, y'all. Billions of dollars have been spent. And just three days to go before Election Day, we're going to take a look at some of the tightest races that will determine who controls Congress come January. Remember, Republicans need a net gain of just five seats to win back control of the House of Representatives, assuming Democrats keep all the seats they currently have, and a net gain of just one seat to take control of what is currently an evenly divided Senate. Let's bring in my political panel. Camilla DeChalis is a congressional reporter for The Washington Post. Jim Dornan is a political and government affairs consultant at Jim Dornan Strategies. And Rohini Kasoglu is a former deputy assistant to President Biden and formerly the domestic policy advisor to Vice President Kamala Harris. Welcome, welcome to you all. I want to start in Pennsylvania, okay? Now, in Pennsylvania, you've got former President Obama, uh, current President Joe Biden. Any minute, they're going to come out. Hopefully, they don't come out in the middle of this so we can get to chatting. They are um, rallying there. Now, before Philly, President Obama was in Pittsburgh earlier. I want to play a little bit of what he had to say. Take a listen. The good news is... You have the power in your hands to steer this country in a better direction. But it only happens if you vote. It only happens if you participate. It's a turnout message, okay? So, Camila, you know both uh, President Biden and President Obama won more than 50 percent of the vote in Pennsylvania. What do you think these appearances today are going to do for turnout three days before Election Day? Well, Obama is known for really galvanizing and motivating voters to go out and really vote. And so you see all these Democratic candidates really using the star power of Obama and other big, big people to just really send the message home. And that is democracy. They're saying, like, democracy is at stake and that there's a lot to lose if voters don't come out and support the Democratic candidates. It, I mean, we've got polling that talks about this, right? There's a recent Marist poll. It was released just yesterday. We're going to put it up on the screen. It shows that John Fetterman is leading Mehmet Oz at 51% to 45% among definite, among definite voters, people that are definitely going to the polls. That's just outside the polls, four-point uh, margin of error. But the gender gap in this poll is astonishing. 55% of women polled supported Fetterman. Only 37% supported Oz. Oz leads with men, 51% to 44%. Rohini, what does that say to you about the, the state of this race, and, and what could it say to you about national trends? Women are important, right? Women are important, and they will be making the case to millions of people, these candidates around the country, where they're, they're saying, let us contrast with the candidate and say, who is going to be the person that's going to protect lowering prescription drug costs? Who's going to protect Medicare and Social Security? Who's going to protect health care between the doctor and the patient, including reproductive health care with women around the country. And so people will be tuning in. And as they will see today, people will be talking about how to present this contrast and that there is a choice that voters have this November. We talk about, we're going to talk about the contrast. We've heard change election. Some people heard referendum, Jim. There's a lot of conventional wisdom being thrown around here. And I was just in Wisconsin, I have to tell you, it made me feel like a lot of the conventional wisdom is not accurately matching up with what is happening on the ground. You've got a lot of um, candidates or this cycle on the ballot. What say you? What are the Republicans saying? Are you nervous? Are, you, are your people nervous about their races? Confident? Um, what you got? I, I would say that uh, the House is probably in hand. Um, I, I think around 20 to 25 seats. 20 to 25, the, that's your prediction. That, that's what the Republicans will pick up, in my opinion. Senate, I think, is completely up for grabs. Uh, we were talking earlier, 538 has four races, Senate races, within the margin, or less than the margin area, they're tied. So, um, I, I mean, I, I, Obama will turn out the vote, absolutely. I think he'll turn it out maybe more than Trump does. The problem is, is that this is what happens when you don't let the voters choose who our candidates are. Oz was not our strongest candidate in that primary. The businessman was. And we have the same problem in Arizona. We have the same problem in New Hampshire. Uh, I would we, argue you have a similar issue in Georgia. Georgia as well, absolutely, 100%. So um, it's, it's, it's disappointing, but these are the cards that we were dealt. And so what we have to do is, and midterms are always turnout. That's, it's all about turnout, as you well know. So you know what? Um, it's, I mean, it sounds cliche, but it's going to be whoever turns out their voters. Whoever turns out their voters. I mean, millions of votes, 36 million votes have already been cast. And some people would say, oh, that definitely favors Democrats, but we just don't know. It is, that is in-person voting. That is also mail-in ballots. I want to go to Florida. I want to talk about the Sunshine State. 
because you talked about President Trump, Jim. He is getting ready to rally for um, the incumbent Senator Marco Rubio against Democratic Congresswoman Val Demings in that state. Um, Trump and Rubio are going to be on the stage, are going to be joined by Florida's other senator, Rick Scott, but who won't be there is Ron DeSantis, honey. Uh, we don't know what is going on there. It all comes as Trump has reportedly plans to announce another run for president on November 14th. It is too much for me. I, 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 Camila, I just, I, I really feel like, you know, Donald Trump just always finds a way to make it about him, and I, I, I cannot. But I want to talk about Florida. How could this be helpful? Could it be hurtful? I mean, should Donald Trump be centering himself in the final days of this? He's not necessarily uh, the, he's like a foil for Democrats, right? It's, it's, what is it? I think Republicans are still banking of how much Trump supporters are still going out and, and supporting him. I mean, you go to some of his campaign rallies where he still hasn't announced whether he's going to run or not, but there is a lot of support. So I think what's really important to see is that Marco Rubio understands that there's a lot of conservative voters that are still supporting Trump. And so they see this as a way to just galvanize more people to the polls. Yeah, your name, Jim, will you be supporting the twice impeached former president? No. Okay. Oh, look, I like it very clean. <laughs> it's a no for Jim, honey. Speaking of election deniers, okay, uh, Donald Trump endorsed Arizona gubernatorial candidate, okay, Carrie Lake. She is leading the Democrat in that race, Katie Hobbs, um, who was the current Secretary of State by three points, 51% to 48%. That's in a Fox 10 Phoenix poll. It is within the margin of error. I cannot say it enough. Rohini, do you think that Katie... First of all, it's within the margin of error. Okay, so... She, it could be a little closer. Do you think that the polls are, are right? Uh, you, and, and how does Katie Hobbs make up ground in these last three days? Well, there's no question that polls matter in to the context of people understanding what's going on, who has momentum, who doesn't. But I've been on enough of these midterm campaigns to know that turnout is everything. The question is going to be, what is going to make people that may weigh in on a poll and say, I like this person, I don't like this person, but what is going to make them get up off of their couch, answer the door, if someone's knocking on the door, and actually go vote and fill out that ballot? And so, obviously, we're seeing record turnout in terms of uh, the number of people filling out their ballots, but we also have to think about in going into this final swing, that's what the candidates are saying. We got to look at what is the ground game, and that is what we don't have a good sense of. Everybody is mm -hmm. saying that we have to focus on the ground game, but we just don't know. And so that's why the momentum going into this weekend, it's also going to reflect who's really got the best ground game in these. I mean, you, I, Jim was over here saying, right, the ground game is actually key. I had the chairman of the Wisconsin Democratic Party on, and he talked about how he was out um, in a rural part of Wisconsin knocking doors with the candidate who was in a Republican district. Uh, I knocked some doors with some uh, canvassers. I followed them while I was in Wisconsin. And the, just the three young ladies that I was with, they hit 100 doors in um, about an hour and a half. And they are not dropping lit. They are talking to people. I don't think is everyone is doing that everywhere, though. No, no. And, and, and you know, um, if you listen to Ronna McDaniel, she'll tell you that there are Republicans out there doing that um, in, in some of these states. But I don't get a sense of the ground game either. Um, it's, it seems like this is so poll centric, this particular election, um, because there's so much at stake between the two houses. And, you know, I think it'll determine whether or not President Biden runs again. Um, if, if he does poorly, I think he probably doesn't. If he does well, I think he probably does. I was at the White House about a couple uh, weeks ago, and they told, they, the people are like, mm, believe Joe Biden, don't believe the polls. Look, <laughs> I think that we have talked a lot about the polls on this show, on this network. Everyone has been talking about the polls. I, I think, though, it leaves out people who are not, like, I haven't, a pollster has never called me. Has a, uh, there are people out yeah. there that a pollster has never picked up the phone and called. What about the folks that are not being reflected in the polls? That is a really great point, because if you're not picking up the phones, then you don't know who the person's voting for. I think canvassing at this point, especially in this maternal election, especially in races where it's really tight and competitive, it really is essential to go out and canvass. I went to Connecticut all the way to Oregon on their races, and you saw that canvassing is effective when you're knocking on the door, getting people to come to the door, and you're really informing them about the candidate and where they stand. And so I think polling only shows one portion or one, one part of the greater total of what people are voting for, but it doesn't don't really reflect everything that's going on. So it's very mm -hmm. careful to not just rely on the polling to really say who's going to win certain races and who's not. The people have the power. If y'all <laughs> have not voted out there, go and vote. Camila, Jim, Rohini, thank you. Congratulations on your new job. I'm sure the Post is excited to have you. <laughs>